Hi guys, welcome back to part three. In this part, we are going to look at how to form altered chords, how to form jazz extensions like nines, elevens, and thirteens, and the alterations using simple triads. So just major and minor chords for the most part, maybe an occasional diminished. If you haven't already, do consider watching part one and part two. That will bring you smoothly to this, or at least watch part one. That will be nice. So let's get cracking right away. So let's first start with the most commonly used flavor of them all i think when it comes to your nines and elevens here's a chord which gives you both so if i play this chord this is b flat over c as a very suspended sound you can call this also as a 7 uh, sus 4 or 11th sound now let's study what's going on first of all for this lesson we will take the key of c okay even though i don't like it much it's okay so you take c and you take B flat in the right hand. So what does this mean? Down a major second and play major chord. So down a major second also means upper minor seventh. So C down to B flat. Okay. And you play a B flat major. And let's look at the intervals this is forming. So C, you have a sus, you have a flat seven first of all in there. A flat seven. Then you have a 9, you call it 9 because there is a 7 flat already and then you have a 11 which is an F. So this is a good flavor to give you the 9 and the 11, it's a good dominant 7th chord as well. This can resolve back to F. C7 tends to always go to F because it's the 5 of the F. Okay, so that's one flavor. Now this could so easily be a minor 11th flavor. Now if you play this a bit up, it sounds a bit weird because I'm playing E and it's clashing with that F, right? But I can, but if I play a minor third, it works completely well. And now this would be a minor 11th voicing. So how do I get a minor 11th? You need an additional note. You need the minor third. So C 11th could just be C bass with a B flat up top or B flat slash C. C minor 11th, you'll need to add that minor third and then play the same chord down two steps or down a major second and play a major chord. This is a more minor 11th flavor. So let's try and do this with a few other keys. So if you want to do like an F7 sus4, go down to play major. It's also dominant chord which takes us to the B flat. If I want to make this a minor uh, 11th sound, add that A flat which is a minor third. You're still going down and playing a major chord. There we go. You can even add a C, so it becomes a polychord in a sense. You'll have an E flat major with an F minor. So how do you get F minor 11th? Play F minor, then go down a major second, play a major chord, and a very neo soulish minor 11th sound. Okay, so just to recap so far, if C is my root, down to major, you get 11th, 9 in there, those extensions. A very dominant 7 sus 4 or 11th sound. If you want to make that minor, just add a minor third in there. So let's journey forward. What if you want a more simpler option, like just a 9th? So C 9th, you just have to play C, go up a perfect 5th and play a minor chord. So if you want C 9th, which would have a dominant 7th in there. So when we write major 9th, we would need a major 7th. But if you just write C 9th, you just need to remember that there'll be a dominant 7th, okay? So C, 9th, easy way to form it. Perfect 5th, upper perfect 5th and play minor. That's G minor forward slash C. Okay, and again, we can have a distinction here. If you want this to be a C, 9th, you can stack up the major 3rd. If you want it to be a minor 9th, you can kind of do the same thing. Go up a perfect 5th, play the minor but just add a minor third to the party. So C ninth, G minor over C, uh, C minor ninth, this could still be a minor ninth, but 
if you add that minor third it will be more obviously a minor ninth so this would highlight the fifth obviously the flat seven the nine okay and the minor ninth you need to just bring in the minor third make it more obvious to get a major ninth almost the same go up a perfect fifth and instead of playing a minor chord play a major chord so you'll get all these relevant intervals c root g perfect fifth major seventh ninth yeah so that's your major ninth in there and what if you want to make this a c minor major ninth very james bond chord i think so you take a c add a minor third go up a perfect fifth and play a major chord there we go so it's g major slash c in whichever way you look at it but a g major slash c with an additional e flat will give you a minor major ninth but without the e flat is just a normal major ninth where you assume that that e exists just to recap g minor over c will give you a minor ninth if you have that minor third in there but if you want to believe that there's a minor third in there and then g minor over c assuming there's an e will be a c ninth which is a very dominant sound so we've got a lot of the nines and elevens and all of that what if we want some altered chords or altered sounds which are a way to make a dominant seventh chord a lot more spicy a lot more interesting you know a lot more interesting rather than just the seventh okay so by theory or by definition an altered chord would mess with the five the perfect fifth gets either raised to a sharp five or lowered to a flat five and uh, also the nines get messed up so it could be a flat nine it could be a sharp nine so with respect to c let's let me help you out with what those notes are if i start with a c7 bass the normal five would be g that would be a flat 5 that would be a sharp 5 perfect na na okay then we go well you have a flat 7 and then you have a 9 that's your 9 normal 9 flat 9 and your sharp 9 so normal 9 flat 9 sharp 9 So how do we get this without having to hit so many notes that's exactly where triads come into play so if you want to bring out a sharp 5 and a sharp 9 both the sharps you can probably look at this voicing so to get it to to, to hear it better maybe you can play a c with a flat 7 in your left hand or even an e and in your right hand you're playing a flat over c 7th so A flat triad over C will be a bit more simple, but add that seven flat. So it's C seven with an A flat up top. How do we remember this? Upper minor sixth, and then play a major chord. So with with the third and the seven, that makes it an altered. So it brings out the sharp five and the sharp nine flavor. What if we want something with a sharp five and a flat nine flavor? So you just this is very easy. Just go up a minor second and play a minor chord. There we go. It resolves very well to the F minor. So if I want to build a C altered. with a flat 9 and a sharp 5 so what's a sharp 5 again g sharp or a flat you can call a flat a flat 13 as well and then you want a flat 9 you do a d flat minor over c7 okay so d d flat minor or c sharp minor with a c bass and just coming back to the earlier one you move up a minor 6th and play a major chord gives you a very sharp 5 and a sharp 9 voicing now coming to the flats what if we want both a flat 5 and a flat 9 you just have to tell yourself upper tritone major upper tritone major when i need to tell myself that so c7 what is its tritone f sharp there we go very spicy what's happening here 
fact, you can just hold down C in the bass. It already creates the sound. So what's happening here? You have flat 7, flat 9 and a flat 5, which you can obviously play with different inversions. And that's a very altered sound. So remember, upper tritone major. And last but not least, what if we want a flat 5 and a sharp 9? I'm just trying all binary permutations there. So that will be pretty simple. You play C 7th or just C with a B flat. Go upper minor 3 and play a minor. That's E flat minor over C 7th. So let's just recap that. A flat over C 7th will give you a very sharp 5, sharp 9 flavor. Upper minor second minor will give you a very still a sharp 5 but a flat 9. That's this one in there. And then if you want that very flat 5, flat 9 flavor, upper tritone major. And if you want a flat 5 and sharp 9 flavor, E flat minor over C7. That will be upper minor third minor. Right guys, so just to recap in this three part series, we've looked at how to use just simple triads, major, minor, diminished and maybe an augmented here and there to form some of the tougher chords out there. Sevens, nines, altered, thirteens, uh, sharp nines and flat nines and whatnot. And the whole intention of doing this is to first of all make it easier to remember so that if you see some of these in a chart, you can formulate it in an easier way for your brain. Perhaps you're like me in knowing the triads very well compared to all this other stuff. So this is something I used to do, you know, in from my college days. If the chord was tricky, I'd always try my best to make it a major or a minor chord and then change the bass uh, and, and find a bass which the bass player is playing, you know, just follow the note which is there in the lower register. So it's essentially a slash chord at the end of the day. So hope you found the series useful. You can find all the three videos in a playlist we've put. Uh, and also do check out our channel. You can, subs first of all, subscribe if you haven't already. And you can find a bunch of playlists pertaining to piano technique, piano um, improvisation, and just music theory concepts, jazz theory, ear training, rhythm practice, music production, which we are going to do a bit more of, and the like. So do stay tuned to our channel and head over to Patreon as well. You can get my handwritten notes for all that we do on YouTube. Thanks a ton for watching the video. Cheers. Catch you in the next one.